Christian Hill Submission Radio, proudly sponsored by Manscaped and Fanzo, and I'm here with the National Treasure, the Jiu Jitsu Champion, the President of the Gabby Garcia Fan Club, Craig Firstoff. How did you even find out about this fight being on? Well, I mean, we were thinking about going to Abu Dhabi to watch Islam Oliveira, get on the beers out there, and then last second he said, don't buy the flight, and I was a bit confused what was going on, and then he said there might be a rematch, so I just jumped on the next flight. Nice, and what, what was your reaction to that? When you I, I don't know, I kind of had a feeling that fight might fall apart. I don't know why I had a feeling Oliveira might pull out, but then, yeah, he got that massive cut. But yeah, super excited about that. And when you got that call out, how long was it between from when you got that call and jumped on a plane straight back in? It was, so I was already, I just flown back from Bali, so I was jet lagged, I was awake at like, 2, 3 a.m. So I got on the next plane, which wasn't until 7.30 p.m. So I saw the boys back at the B team for about three hours, and then I was out of there. Nice. And with this fight being on short notice, uh, how do you even have amount of prep time on short notice uh, like what what were you doing between now and the fight with Dalix what would you go through well the last fight we spent a ton of time on submission defense obviously that's a waste of time because as we learned Islam doesn't know any submissions right he just holds on to the back for 20 minutes um, for this fight yeah we this time we'll probably get out of the body triangle last time we were happy again there was no submission threat at all so Volks was just chilling getting energy back punching him in the head this time We'll get out of the back. And with that, what were some lessons you took away from Islam's grappling? What do you think of his grappling against Alex? Oh, I mean, as it went, I was so happy because I talked so much shit in the interview before and it all came true. Everyone attacked me on the internet. They couldn't get it. It was one of those ones where I say it, it's a joke if it goes wrong, but if it goes right, I was being deadly serious. So, like, I got a lot of hate messages after that. But the best part about it was after the fight, finding all the internet trolls to go that went back and commented on people hating on me just to twist the knife in that was the most satisfying part for me about that it, you mentioned on the plane uh on social that sambo was fake why is sambo fake in your opinion what are your thoughts around it all do you still feel the same what you mentioned previously i put sambo and catch wrestling together because not one single person knows anyone else in the world that does any of those two things you know what I mean? We've heard about cat dressing, we've heard about Sambo, we've never seen it work. You know what I mean? Like if Islam gets a submission, that's a jiu-jitsu submission. If he gets a takedown, that's a judo takedown. If he shoots a double leg, that's a wrestling move. So for me, where's Sambo? Sambo's a myth, it doesn't exist. And uh, Submission Radio guys spoke to Javier Mendes yesterday and Javier was saying that he believes Alex will take more chances and uh, he'll throw more because he won't be afraid of the takedown this time. What do you think of that assessment from Javier, from his coach? Yeah, I think that's pretty accurate. I think uh, a lot of people saw that in the first fight, saw Volks was being pretty conservative early and started to pick it up late. So his confidence just boosted throughout the entire fight. So yeah, I would say it's definitely going to be uh, a more action-packed beginning to this fight than the previous fight. And with this, it's not something you see every day, you know, especially from champions taking such risks. Um, Alex is a special guy. He already has a legacy within the UFC. Uh, what do you think that says about him taking that massive risk? Um, and also, what, what is it that makes him equipped to actually get the job done? Well, yeah, I mean, a lot of people look at the fight and they think, oh, he's going to get paid, he's going to make bank, he's got a built-in excuse. But really, at the end of the day, no one hit Volkanovski. He wouldn't take the fight unless he thought he could win. So for me, his confidence is so high, he thinks he can take this guy out on 10, 11 days' notice. So for me, that's everything. The first fight, in his opinion, went so well that 10, 11 days is all he needs for the rematch. That's something I respect. Mm. And last couple of things, um, if he pulls it off, uh, what does it make him? What does it make him? It makes him a man that disproved Sambo and that'll trump his legacy in the sport because we've wasted another martial art. Most martial arts were killed in 1993. Somehow Sambo has limped and lingered on to 2023. So Volkanovsky kills Sambo and we get to stop hearing about this Russian dance art. Nice. And uh, you mentioned Russian dance. So what, what, what do you mean by that? Like when you mentioned the Russian dance? Oh, when I first heard about it, I thought they were talking about the Brazilian dancer of Samba. And honestly, that is a more frightening prospect, Islam dancing Brazilian Samba.
Cool. And finally, how do you see the fight going in, in short amount of time next week? How do you, how do you see it playing out? So obviously Islam loves an arm triangle. If he tries to pull any of that bullshit, he's going straight into a buggy choke. Uh, he loves to take the back from Turtle. He tries any of that shit, he's getting knee barred. So I think wherever it goes, he's getting submitted. Awesome. Thanks for your time, Craig. Thank you.